will it affect us here in Wisconsin? For some perspective, we turn to UW Madison sociology and law professor Joe Conti. Good morning, professor. Thank you. Thank so, you for having me on. There are a lot of folks who are confused. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I think it's safe to say a lot of people did not see this coming from and even understand it. I, I guess what's the base level of knowledge people need to have kind of as they're trying to process the impact of all of this? Well, I think it starts with understanding uh, how the, 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 the legal relationship between the United Kingdom and Europe. And yeah. I think a lot of the uncertainty that we're going through right now is, like you say, people didn't expect it to happen. In fact, this was a non-binding uh, referendum. Uh, but now that it has, uh, where, where the contingency plans are, aren't really in place. So the uncertainty will likely continue as the UK and Europe negotiate what their future relationship will look like. And kind of looking back into what it means for us here in the United States, uh, not to get too political, but there are some parallels with kind of the the undertones here of what people think and believe and how things should be. Can you kind of explain the relationship there? Certainly. I, I think um, it makes sense to view the, the Leave campaign in the United Kingdom as a manifestation of a lot of frustration uh, at elites, of those that are governed rather than governing, to use a phrase that you just mm -hmm. used. Um, and I think that kind of wave of populism is present in, in the United States as well. And I think for uh, uh, you know, Trump supporters, they, they take a lot of encouragement out of this, seeing a model of success of populism. But this is also in other countries in Europe. I think we should expect to see referendums or moves to have referendums in, in Spain, in uh, the Netherlands, uh, Sweden, and then there's the issue of Scotland right. uh, leaving as well. So we had some experience, at least when Greece was having its, its economic problems, the market suffered. But I don't know that people quite envisioned what was going to happen over the last few days. I mean, there was an analyst who talked about the $3 trillion in the global financial markets have been lost since this decision. Is this really the latest example of how this world, I mean, finances are global now. I mean, you think you have a 529, you think you have a 401k. Right. It's not just tied to an American company anymore. That's certainly true. It is a uh, finance is one of the most globalized sectors of the economy, and we, uh, you know, the world. They talk about the world being a smaller place, and it's that is certainly true. And we see that in the uh, the ripples of these uh, recessions. We saw it in the Great Recession and how that uh, swept up countries around the world, and, and we see this again. I would expect um, markets to calm somewhat in the short term, but uh, to remain volatile as these questions keep. Uh, developing in Europe, are there going to be more countries leaving? I would, I would, think that would probably induce another round of um, sell-offs. And you mentioned to us, really, the word of all of this is uncertainty. I think so, and I, th I think that's that's certainly tr that's true for everybody, even those uh, here in the United States that are watching from a distance. Uh, I, our, our, our fates are, are caught up in what happens there, uh, most, most directly in terms of uh, perhaps people's retirement accounts, but also Wisconsin does substantial business with uh, the United Kingdom, and yep. uh, the terms of trade have become unfavorable to uh, those exports, um, at least over the short term. It's going to be interesting to watch going yeah. forward. Professor Conti, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We All appreciate right. it. Thank you very much for having me.